Hello there, this video will go over configuring a Linux desktop on an Android so that it goes from looking like this to this. If you are interested in Linux on an Android, then you may be interested in my playlist that will go over how to install and set up a Linux desktop on an Android without running. In our Linux desktop, we are first going to set the majority of the fonts. As we are adjusting the fonts, we can do a two finger pinch zoom in to see more clearly if needed as we configure the fonts. To set fonts, we will go to Customize Look and Feel, which we can get to by clicking on the icon in the bottom left corner to show the menu, and then go to the Preferences category where we will open up Customize Look and Feel. The main places we can set fonts are in the Widget tab and Window Border tab under the Title Bar and Miscellaneous sub-tabs. I recommend exploring Customize Look and Feel for additional adjustments, but again, these are generally where we can set the fonts. When we click on the current font being used, a window will come up where we can select the font size. Once we've selected the font size we would like, we just need to click on the OK button in the bottom right corner of the window. When we are satisfied with all of the font sizes we've picked out, we can then click on the Apply button and Customize Look and Feel so that the changes take effect. After that, we are going to go to the Icon Theme tab where we can select whichever icon theme we would like. Again, when we've selected the icon theme we want, we need to click on the Apply button for the change to take place. We can then close out of Customize Look and Feel by clicking on the Close button. Next, we will configure the desktop font and background by right-clicking anywhere in the desktop background, select Desktop Preferences, and go to the Appearance tab. Note that most themes in the LXDE desktop can be configured by simply right-clicking on them. Here we can set the desktop background and configure the font size, font color, and font shadow color. To set the wallpaper, we need to click on the current one being used and then choose the desired background we would like. If you can't select a background, then you may need to change the current wallpaper mode. I recommend selecting Stretch to fill the entire monitor area for the wallpaper mode. This should now allow you to change the background. If you would like to have a Debian background, you can find some by going to File System under the Places panel on the left side and going into the USR Share Wallpapers Debian Theme Contents and then Images folder. I recommend choosing a background that has a similar resolution to your device's screen. Once we have selected the background we want, we need to click on the Open button in the bottom right corner in order to use the image as the desktop background. Once we are done with the wallpaper and desktop font, we can click the close button to close out of desktop preferences. Now we are going to adjust the size of the icons. To do that, we are going to go to the menu and in the system tools category, we are going to open up file manager PC man FM. Under the view tab, we can select zoom in to make the icons bigger. To make the icons smaller, we just need to go back to the View tab and select Zoom Out. When we are done adjusting the size of the icons, we can close out of the File Manager. Keep in mind that the desktop icons may disappear at random when opening and closing windows. Don't panic if this happens because everything can still be accessed from the menu. If you want to make the desktop icons come back, then you will have to shut down and start up Linux by disconnecting stopping the session, starting the session, and then starting up the desktop again. To add applications to the desktop, all we have to do is right-click on the application from the menu and select Add to Desktop. To delete a desktop icon, we have to left-click on the icon and then do Shift-Delete on our keyboard and confirm we want to delete the application from the desktop. After that, we are going to turn off the LXDE screensaver because it doesn't work and it's good practice to turn it off. To do that, we will go to the menu and in the Preferences category, we will open up Screensaver. If a window pops up with a warning, we will just click Cancel to make it go away. To turn off the screensaver, we need to click on the Mode pull-down and select Disable Screensaver. From there, we can close out of the screensaver window. 
The last place we will make configurations are for the taskbar. First off, we will adjust the taskbar font by right-clicking on the taskbar, select Panel Settings, and go to the Appearance tab. Here we can adjust the font size and font color. To set the font size, we need to check the box next to Size in order to be able to change the size. When we are done adjusting the taskbar font, we can click the Close button to close out of Panel Preferences. Next, the CPU usage monitor on the right of the taskbar will likely be just a block of color. If that's the case, we will right-click on it and select Remove CPU Usage Monitor from Panel because it's of no use to us. Now we are going to change the number of virtual desktops in the desktop pager that's on the left of the taskbar by right-clicking on the desktop pager and selecting Desktop Pager Settings. Here we will change the number of desktops to two. You can have more or less if you would like, just note that the more desktops equals more resources being used. After that, we are done with the virtual desktops, so we can click the close button to close out of the window. Finally, we can change the menu icon in the bottom left corner. To do this, we can right click on the menu, select menu settings, and then click on the browse button. There are a bunch of icons to choose from if we go to the user, share, and then icons folder. If you would like to use the Debian icon as the menu icon, we can find it in the vendor, scalable, and then emblems folder. To use the icon we have selected, we need to click on the OK button and then click on the close button once we are satisfied with the menu icon. If we somehow mess up the taskbar, that is A-OK -okay because we can restore it to its original state with just two commands in a terminal. We can do that by going to the menu and in the System Tools category we will open up LX Terminal. Before we restore the taskbar back to its default, we are going to configure the terminal real quick by going to the Edit menu and selecting Preferences. Here we can choose the font size, font colors, and more. When we are all good with our configurations, we can click the OK button so that the changes apply to the terminal. Now we can do our two commands to restore the taskbar. First, we will do cd space tilde slash dot config to change the current directory we are in to the dot config folder. The tilde stands for the home directory, which we can see if we do echo space tilde. The result of that is the home directory. Next, we will do rm space dash r space lx panel to delete the lx panel directory, which deletes the taskbar. All we have left to do now is to reboot Linux by clicking on the three dot menu in the VNC floating menu, select disconnect, right click or long press on Debian, stop the session, and then click on Debian to get the terminal where we will run our goel script to start up the desktop again. When the desktop starts up, we can see that the taskbar is restored back to its default. How cool is that? Restoring the taskbar with those two commands that we did can also be done in the user land terminal if needed. I will also be making a future video that will go into more detail about the taskbar. If you enjoyed this video, then you may be interested in the companion book to this video, Linux on Android phones and tablets. And other than that, see you soon!